as as far as like him acting off of all of these you know kind of actors who have been around for so long he really holds his own and yeah. it's just uh man so much respect for that kid yeah i feel like he's the main reason uh, you know the majority of the reason why uh joe you know president joe becomes uh you know kind of um, I heard just thinking, yeah, starts thinking more about other people rather than himself. In the end, you know, from because of what happens, um, he doesn't want that to ha- that that trauma uh, to go or that kid to experience that trauma and, and change his you know life forever and have him become the rainmaker. Yeah, exactly. And and um, they share when they're in the, that little tunnel out in the back in the cane fields. There's this kind of uh, pretty cool scene where you can tell Joe is kind of starting to relate to this kid as he has had a very similar rough upbringing, you know what I mean? And Mm -hmm. uh, the only real difference is that he has these crazy intense uh, telekinetic powers that um, that can potentially harm people um, and can't really control them like when he gets scared or nervous you know stuff happens and as we as we see in that scene when um uh what's that one the one get uh jesse who is supposed to be like you know one of the quickest shot gat men around in that uh yeah in kansas city i think is where their the film is based in and um yeah yeah jesse uh, who's played by Garrett Delahunt, a very great underrated actor. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Finds um finds out that Joe's uh you know their Sarah and Sid are are hiding him at the farmhouse, and uh, he figures it out and um, goes to basically collect uh, young Joe, and um, you know when Sid comes out to see what's happening, and and uh, Jesse gets nervous and pulls the you know the revolver out on him. And uh, he starts to fall down the stairs, and it create it sets yeah. off this crazy, intense, Such a good scene. yeah, intense scene where you see the full extent of of uh, of um, of Sid, yeah, the Rainmaker or Sid's uh, powers. He raises everything up in the room, including uh, Jesse, and just implodes him from the inside out. And you see it play out in like slow motion, and it's a. Uh, in a kind of in uh, a beautiful uh, way that they shot that. Slow motion. Yeah. Um, I was gonna say I like how the film didn't make the the power of the telekinesis like it's really they didn't really make it that big until right then and there. That's when they were like, oh, that's why they have telekinesis because this little fucker is gonna kill a bunch of people when he's <laughs> basically older. So. They had to make a point, you know what I mean? And that point was, for me, probably the best scene in the movie. And I was like, shit, dude, this kid's going to kill everybody. <laughs> Hopefully they can they calm him down before he, and, you know, obviously in the movie. It gets, it starts to look good until, you know, big, big Bruce Willis show comes through. And, you know, you know and we're getting to more of the climax of the film, sort of. You notice when she, like, uh, Joe's trying to go pick up uh, Sid when he's falling down the stairs. And Emily, like tackles him out of the uh out of the house because she knows what's about to go down it didn't matter you gotta get the hell out of there yeah she's like no 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 you don't need to save him he's fine <laughs> didn't he like fly back up or some shit like he like uh see it I, I forgot how the- no he just fell down and then like when he gets up he's all pissed off and he fucking blows up but um oh that's exactly what happened yeah yeah he implodes that that guy he said that kid is such a good actor, dude. He 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 has like really kind of tough talking scenes as well, dude. Like when so he, uh, Joe talks to him, like I think in the little tunnel that you were talking about, that's some good talking scenes for a little kid, dude. Because he's like, "Is that your mom?" Sarah's not my mom. I was like, "Damn!" I was like, you know, I didn't have, expect the kid to have such like crazy sass in a film, dude. And I was just like, dude this movie sold like everybody kind of sold the film like it made it good like story arcs definitely uh, between the children the women and the main characters which is Joe and the, uh, the mobsters and shit dude like it was just very very nice what about but, Kid Kid Blue we can't forget about him oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> 
the kind of cowboy. Yeah, this kind of this the one of the kind of comedic relief Gatman, um, and it seems to like be like he wants to really really impress Abe. It's almost like he he will do anything to get his approval. Um, uh, you know, and he feels it feels like he really has a grudge out for younger Joe from the very beginning. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's just biding his time until he can um, he can he can kill him. And uh, as we all know, the people who've seen the film, uh, he doesn't kill Joe. Joe gets the better of him. But um, he's a great uh, Kid Blue is a great character, nonetheless. You know what I noticed? Fucking Rian Johnson loves using that guy. <laughs> yeah, he's in every. I think everything that he's done. In some form. From Brick to Knives Out, I think. Yeah. And this one. So, yeah, dude. It's funny. I love that directors have these... They have to have these certain actors in their film. You know what I mean? I love that. Because this guy, guy plays a good... like he can do, He's done, like, pretty much anything from comedic relief to just being, like, a decent side character. Like, he's, he's pretty good at doing that, dude. But, just the, yeah, dude. Just the fact that... So, Abe and, like... Older Joe goes and fucking he lets Kid Blue um, take him in on purpose and then executes the entire mob. <laughs> uh, he, he only he, yeah he, he he only maims Kid Blue and uh, which is you know you would think that Kid Blue would be like all right cool I got out you know I'm out I'm fine but no instead he goes after. Uh, both of the Joes and uh, when he could have just you know left and done his own thing but he's like so power hungry I guess he um, he goes out to the cane fields the farmhouse and um, and tries to uh, pick a fight and that's a great scene too because it's on the one of those futuristic hover bikes that, yeah you know that we see with Paul Dano's character in the beginning and you don't really see it till then until the climax where he he attacks young Joe and um, there's this great kind of uh, foreshadowing in the so in the beginning of the film Joe's talking to Kid Blue and he's uh, and you know he's uh, Kid Blue's kind of doing the whole I'm a tough guy with my you know revolver his big gad as they call it uh-huh and um Show off his, uh, gun handling skills yeah and he's basically like you know uh blunder blast is a shit weapon it has no range you can't do shit with it it fucking sucks like a real gun is like this you know and that's a for, like kind of foreshadowing what happens in the end because then young joe and kid blue have this shootout and um he's you know you see uh JGL or, or or young Joe kind of struggling with the blunder bus and um he gets creative and cre- shoots the asphalt and creates this kind of smoke bomb effect where now Kid Blue's flying towards him on the you know on the on the motorbike uh, or hover bike and uh can't see anything and gets fucking just blasted by the blunder bus and uh and killed but I love that kind of foreshadowing where that conversation comes full circle and uh you know it doesn't end too well for <laughs> blue mm-hmm. yeah he had, he had a he was trying to prove something and it just didn't end well for that guy uh but i did he was so his scenes were always probably like if not the funniest were the most interesting because he just knew he was a little asshole <laughs> but yeah dude i love that guy's scenes dude he just kind of kind of stole some of the scenes away because uh, he was the only one that was funny, I would say. Yeah, when he gets smacked in the head with the door. <laughs> oh, my God. And you shoot his gun off. <laughs> <laughs> and it, and it's, you can hear the ricochets, dude, because it's a pea shooter. It's, I, I think it's, like, meant to ricochet. And, like, and they're like, oh, you want to shoot off your other foot? <laughs> or something like that. Like, they tell him. Uh, Abe tells him, put that thing away before you shoot off your other foot. <laughs> Or um, back in, in in Joe's apartment or condo, whatever you want to call it, um, <clears throat> you know, he comes back to get some of his stuff 
when the the gap men have already raided his place and blue's already there and uh they have this kind of face off and 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 joe throws him in the floor safe and slams the door shut and and it f- fucking uh slams on his hand oh yeah dude that looked like it hurt so much yeah and, and you can you, you, you've definitely like yeah you definitely feel that and and that's the one of the parts where joe's like don't worry tell abe i'm gonna get i'm gonna make this right and i'm gonna kill my loop and you know by that time blues ha- like had it and super angry and and injured and he just starts shooting through the floorboards <laughs> did you notice the scene uh right before that or it's actually right after but it's it shows you later uh bruce willis's character is actually following his his uh young self and he he hears a voice in the alley and he looks over and it's kid blue and he's like fucking kid blue like you could tell it's a flashback from when he was younger like you know remembering who kid blue was he's like jesus christ like i forgot about that guy (laughs) he's like i thought i'd never see his ass again right (laughs) yeah and he's like fucking kid blue and then you know he ends up saving himself when he falls off the off of the uh, fire escape but that was a pretty good scene too oh yeah the um for as much go ahead i was gonna say because it leads into what we need to see which is uh future joes it goes into that whole it switches basically which i think people when i first saw this movie i was like what the fuck's going on dude why are we seeing young joe doing like some other shit this time and then it like snaps into your head but go ahead what was uh were you gonna say something with i was just gonna say i really i loved how as much uh as this is a dialogue driven film or how much story they're throwing at you like the action that we do get is very polished and stylized in a really great way where you're just like man this is some uh, like really good action for a film like this you know what i mean they didn't have a if they had like a mid budget but everything they pulled off um looks so good and um i don't know i just uh, i love like, all, I love it so much <laughs> it was like a it was like a dystopian western or something in some way mm-hmm. if yeah. you can if that's even a category i don't know if anyone's tried but <laughs> cowboy versus aliens no I'm just joking uh <laughs> yeah dude but this movie does so much dude like i'm surprised this is a Rian Johnson film, but sometimes not surprised. You know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's just like he he, he tries to do something different, dude, and he he seems to nail it, dude. Like, and I don't know, he's been getting too much flack for that his Star Wars, dude. And I don't know, that's just one movie, and I, I guess if you fuck up one movie, it starts to like build up. You know what I mean? So I feel like I hope- the, the, something like that shouldn't count against a director because it's not his source material. You know, like he w- tried to do something different and take risks. And as we know, Star Wars fans or a lot of them are very jaded and don't like. Unforget- to, yeah, don't like anything. So, you know. I don't think that should hinder him as far as like whether he's a good filmmaker or or not. You know what I mean? He was um, he just had a different vision, and um, you know, I have some of my problems with that movie, but it's a it's pretty all right. It's not yeah. It's not a bad um, entry into that franchise. I mean, you you, you, you can kind of look past this one, not really. But I was gonna say you can't look past Brick. You can't look past fucking uh, Knives Out, dude. Those are fucking a like those are a pluses, dude. Like those are like top notch movies right there, dude. And man, and then a Brick is like his earliest career too. So it's like, oh yeah, man, I can't, I can't believe people are shitting on Rian Johnson, dude. I'm like, look what he, just those two movies alone. And then this one's like just a little more sugar on top it's like fuck people people are just it, yeah, it's, it's tough to be a director right now it seems in my in my opinion it just seems very tough to please and you try to do your own thing if you are if they hire you for it you know what I mean yeah but yeah the, the story the story just gets more fucking crazier because obviously we are pretty much at the point where uh, with blue it's climaxing with the fight with Kid Blue and then you just get into well Joe just got done murdering the mob he kills Abe uh 
then he goes on the hunt because now he knows where the Rainmaker is. And we had this last final.